Well, it is a really important time of the year. The playoffs are coming. Trade deadlines are here or over, so waivers are super important. We're going to tell you who to pick up. It's a really important waiver wire week at the running back position. Make sure you let us know how your season is going. Subscribe and enjoy the show. Welcome to the Fantasy Footballers Podcast with your hosts, Andy Holloway, Jason Moore, and Mike Wright. Oh, welcome in. <laughs> Went a little Nick's in there. <laughs> welcome <We're all coming. laughs> Tuesday, November 21st, the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Mike Wright, Jason Moore, Andy Holloway. Joined, as always, by Deucer's Alley, Al Borland, Judge Giamatti, Papa Josh over there. I like one of the three of them. Try to <laughs> guess which one. Uh, no, I'm mostly, I, just so the, the listeners know, I know it was a little emotional earlier in the week. <laughs> I forgive you, Al. Thank you. <laughs> there you go. So you like two of them. I forgive you as well. <laughs> <laughs> unforgiveness. I take it back. I um, declare unforgiveness. I declare unforgiveness. Uh, hey. Welcome in, one and all. Big day, waiver day, Monday night game to talk about. Megalodon episode. Mm, big week. Tomorrow. Big show. Mega, 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 megalodon. The Megalodon episode is tomorrow, which means it's our Wednesday, Thursday, Friday episode all wrapped into one. And uh, it, that means by necessity, due to it being longer, it will come out a little bit later. But do yes. not fear. You will have a monster Megalodon show to carry you through the weekend. Look, maybe uh, maybe Aunt Barb is uh she's she's talking oh. to you oh barbara she's telling you all about her new uh, hobbies and you're like hey hold on a second i have to poop and then you pop in the episode nice. and mm. you have a nice long megala poop has that's gonna be a long poop has you're gonna have some hemorrhoids after that. Look, you know family everyone getting together on thanksgiving you know the <laughs> oh i know where you're going no oh, I don't, maybe you do uh the Sometimes conversations can turn a little bit uncomfortable mm -hmm. because people have different perspectives on life. Have you have we ever considered like when that comes up, just start talking about your your fantasy lineup? Oh, that's nice. a new way to do it. Because I mean, no one cares. Like it is the ultimate. No one cares about. Your oh, they'll fantasy. walk away from yeah, you. That's what I'm saying. Like I will. So, stop so this Barb is, Barb's going on about some politics, and you yeah. just go, man, Garrett Wilson this week. <laughs> I don't know what he's going to do with Tim Boyle. Got me negative points. Less. What, what am I supposed to do? Here? What am I supposed to do, Barb? And then Barb just slowly yeah. backs into the bushes. <laughs> See, I actually thought you were saying you just pop one air butt in. You know what I mean? Oh. For the whole Thanksgiving. But uh, Megalodon show tomorrow. Excited about that. We had a Monday night football game with. Yeah, we did. You know, a lot of things happened in that game. <laughs> You had Jalen Hurts with negative points at halftime. They won the game, by the way. Mm -hmm. Had a big game from DeAndre Swift on 12 carries. It was the Devontae Smith game. A.J. Brown bottled up. One for eight. So a lot of people went into Monday Night Football saying, oh, I just need a little bit from A.J. Brown, and they got, uh, look, it was Hollywood Brown Pants. It's A.J. Brown Pants this week. If your last name was Brown, not a lot of fantasy points. Yeah. And then on the other Nine side, for eight. on the other side, you had 24 receptions by the Kansas City receiving core spread across 11 targets. And um, Justin Watson led the way, five for 53 and a touchdown. Isaiah Pacheco ran well against the tough defense, 19, 19 for 89. And Patrick Mahomes and company, you know, he's barely above 50% completion, under 200 yards, threw a pick to, you know, he's got – Wide receivers that can't catch the the football. Oh my goodness! I mean, this wasn't Mahomes' fault. You know, he he hit uh, he MVS. Threw, for, he threw a touchdown pass. He did throw a touchdown pass that uh, MVS said, "I don't want that." MVS is like, 
Return to Cinder. Johnston. Quentin Johnston. And he just channeled it. It was also, a you know, if you didn't get to watch the game, it was a very wet, rainy game. It had been raining there for several days. There was hope that the rain would let up by the time the game goes. But this was a, a sloppy affair. Yeah, and, uh, you know, at this point, and we're talking waivers today, we'll look at wide receivers. You might as well, you know, we got the wheel of shame. You might as well spin the wheel of Kansas City receivers every week on on the waiver wire because they just they spread the ball to everybody and you know it doesn't matter what we want from them it seems Justin Watson had 11 targets you know uh, what what Kansas City what are we doing yeah I mean, what are we doing it's a superstar <laughs> he, yeah yes he, he also had a super drop any other thoughts on this game that you guys want to talk about uh man no, it was just – it was mostly pain. Mostly fantasy pain watching that game. Yeah, uh, Jason pulled out a win. Hertz oh, ended up – I needed like 12 points from Hertz, which he has never not achieved in his entire career. So it was like, you know it's going to happen. Yep. But go. But halfway into well, the third quarter – we did. Well, I did, I, no, <laughs> I did too, but once – But he, he, he gave up hope. Once you're deep into the third quarter and he's got zero fantasy points – Are you going to out him, Mike? <laughs> no, it just it, about it, what happened in the, the channel. Someone may have tilted, declaring, "I'm selling all my players. Like I'm out. Come give me your draft picks for next year." So, well, here, and I then, think he was really just looking for those trades to be ready. Yes. If the if the game got towards the very end, he could smash accept. Because on our it. trade deadline is over when that game is over. So it's <laughs> like if I if if I'm out of the running, then it was what you had to do. Yeah, I didn't I didn't have a choice. But then it was like, yes, I'm back in. <laughs> and now, now Andy and I have the matchup we have been waiting for for half of the season. He said season. he turned over a new leaf this morning. Mike. I did. He I'm, says he's looking forward to it. Mm -hmm. It's going to be fun. Oh. He's going to have fun playing fantasy football. That's, That's great. Right. And may the best man win until Thursday goes I sour. Don't believe you, but all right, it's nice. Into the news we go. News and notes from around the league, presented by USAA Insurance. I am in on that plan, though. I want to have. I, this is going to be a fun week. Uh, Kyron Williams returning from his high ankle sprain. Sean McVay said he will be back against the Cardinals. This is uh, significant. You know, if you were leaning on or emergency starting Royce Freeman or Daryl Henderson, Kyron should be back. We we don't know. You know, like a high ankle sprain. We didn't think it was going to be severe to begin with with Kyron. Then all of a sudden he's on IR. And we and maybe it's just uh, some Jonathan Taylor PTSD, but you know he's had time to recover. I expect him to be the lead back. He could be a league winner at some point in time. Could I wasn't confident enough to, you know, to put him right back in there as a like guarantee for high volume, but that is in play this week. I just don't know if it's going to be a work him back situation or not. So, because it was a high ankle sprain, we've talked about this a lot, the majority of high ankle sprains, you miss zero games or three games. Like, th that's the normal timeline. Then when you come back, you're not necessarily at full strength for that first week or two. But because they had their bye week already in the uh, IR window, this will be five weeks he has missed. So, he should be completely ready to go at near pre-injury you know pre -injury levels of production. The matchup against Arizona, if I had Kyron Williams, I would. it is not without risk. Certainly, uh, re-aggravation or any kind of... Uh, Timeshare. <clears throat> right. The limitation on his touches could exist, but I will absolutely be putting him back in the lineup against Arizona. Cleveland, Baltimore, the next two weeks for Kyron after this week against Arizona. So, Woof. So if he isn't back to full strength this week, it might be a rough three weeks of... Uh, just prepping up for the fantasy playoffs and hoping he can deliver uh, in weeks 15, 16, and 17. Zach Ertz is eligible to return. We'll see if that has an impact. Uh, Dawson Knox, eligible to return, but Sean McDermott came out yesterday, for those of you with Dalton Kincaid, and uh, McDermott said he's not ready to return. Dawson Knox needs more time, and I, for one, think the hey. healthiest Dawson yeah. Knox possible is what we need back out there for 2024. Like, <laughs> well, I mean, like week 18. 
Yes. I mean, get a tune-up for the playoffs. Agreed. Just heal up until Agreed. then. Agreed. <laughs> uh, so there you go. More news. Cooper Cup day-to-day -day with a low ankle sprain. Nerve-wracking. I mean, the Cooper Cup situation from here to the end of the year is going to be nerve-wracking because yeah. here's what we've known this year. Injured twice. When it's not Stafford, bad. When it is Stafford, could get hurt. Also could just, get re-injured. Could just be bad. Could just be bad. <laughs> so this week, Jason, do you have the uh, conviction if he's acted to just throw him back in against Arizona? Probably, right? It, it would be really difficult to bench him if he's active. I don't expect him to be active, though, which means Puka should be an awesome play against Arizona. One can hope. Uh, Kenneth, can hope. Kenneth Walker, it, there will be an extra pause after any <laughs> – player that jason and i have in our matchup this week as we glare oh my gosh yeah, yeah. that was a puka glare uh kenneth walker not a candidate for ir at this time dnp on monday the thanksgiving game yeah, he's not playing. there's no way he's going to be out there um pete carroll said no structural issue to geno smith he's a dmp we'll see if he's out there thursday Derek carr remains in concussion protocol uh he they were on by last week so we will be monitoring that closely, whether we get a Jameis Winston experience or not. Are they Thursday or are they Sunday? Cause I that, believe they're Sunday. Okay. Yeah, that, they are Sunday. That'll give him a little bit more time to clear concussion protocol. I feel like his injury is one that I'm very much monitoring because it has what seems to be a pretty big effect on Alvin Kamara, on Chris Olave, um, on Rashid, Rashid Shahid. Shahid. The players I – We'll have different expectations for based on whether it's Carr or Jameis. The one thing we do know is Michael Thomas won't be a part of that equation. He is going to take some time to recover from a knee injury. Devon Achan, not been ruled out yet. Worst, he, you know, I like Mike McDaniel's comedy. Mm -hmm, I think mm -hmm. he's a funny, dry humor kind of fella. Love it. Not helpful. Not helpful <laughs> right here. Uh, he, You know, last week when they're asking about his involvement, he came out and he's like, what kind of... Uh, what kind of stakes you got on fantasy yeah. football this week? And you're like, ha, 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 ha. But seriously, tell us the truth. Um, this week, he said, I definitely would not rule him out, but I definitely would not rule him in. Thank you. <laughs> I'll, I'll go ahead and say I don't think he plays. They play on Friday. Yeah. Don't yeah. don't forget, everyone. Black, Black Friday Black game. Friday with uh, Tim Boyle. <laughs> Tim Boyle. That's what the NFL wanted when they scheduled. <laughs> that's what Amazon wanted when they scheduled yeah. Black Friday football. Yeah. So. Oh, I, I like that you said that's what Amazon wanted when they scheduled because you know that's what happened. They bought their way into that. that oh, 100. Existing. Yeah. They went to the NFL and said, hey. And honestly. How I'm, much can we pay you to dude, make Dude, I'm all in it's on that. It's a great idea. I'm, yeah. I'm in on that. Yeah. I, I love the. I mean, you got the long weekend. Let's just get a Friday game yeah. in there. Yeah. Justin Jefferson questionable again. Monday so, night against the Bears. Uh, I don't think he plays. Yeah, it seems it seems so. I had mentioned on the 21-day window before that it, it means that he couldn't wait until after the bye. Apparently, I don't know how to do math on what 21 days yeah. is from that window with a Monday night football game with the Bears, but it's being reported that he could not have the window activated until after the bye week, so maybe he does not play against the Bears. They want to be smart, is what they said. And then Patrick Taylor signed from the practice squad for the Packers. Packers had Aaron Jones didn't practice Monday. Even if his injury isn't long-term, I don't expect him to play this week. And then I don't know if you guys saw this, but A.J. Dillon was limited with a groin injury. It, yeah, but it's but it's the also uh, – Thursday, right? It's it's a an estimated right. practice. Like, they're not actually practicing – Fair. Uh, so uh, I expect AJ Dillon will be all right, and the they other signed James Robinson yeah. as well. Well, because uh, Emmanuel Wilson, their other, the rookie backup, third string running other, back, other, he was also hurt on Sunday. Desmond Ritter will start for the Falcons. Arthur Sith, <laughs> uh, bringing Ritter back. Tim Boyle will start for the Jets. I guess yeah. you know we got this news early yesterday. It's, I'll say this: the, the the Vegas line changed by two points with them announcing Tim Boyle over Zach Wilson. And when I say two points, I mean two points in favor of the opposition of the Jets. Yeah. Right. So yeah. and and Boyle did not. Uh, 
He does not get me excited. We have been clamoring for a different quarterback to be playing than Zach Wilson. And sometimes it's a be careful what you wish yeah, for situation. Like, fine, fine, we'll do it. This should be worse. But I want it very clear that when we've been clamoring for a different quarterback, that has been on the general manager to acquire a different quarterback. That being said, Trevor Simeon, also on this roster, I don't understand why he's not the backup. He is actually now the backup. Uh, Zach Wilson should be active for this game, but he will be the third string quarterback. Man, probably doesn't feel very good. No, it's he's used to it. <laughs> he's it, always been a third string quarterback. It's it's performance uh, wise, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's over. Uh, Steelers fired Matt Canada. Wow. Yeah, did you not oh. see this one? Matt Canada, the Canada. American. Canada. Uh, man, uh, there was a video. I that, did not see this until just now. Yeah, this this broke this morning. Wow. And then I also saw a video of. Uh, I, I don't Chris know. Chris Boswell. Yes. Is that the one you're talking That's about? That's the one. I, yes. Where, was that in the last game? No, because they just lost. Yeah, it must have been. a. So a, I don't know when this happened, but it was a a, a, a jubile Matt Canada, you know, trying to celebrate a win with his team. And then Chris Boswell is kind of walking behind them, and the camera catches him saying, not because of you. Oh, No. <laughs> No, for real? Yeah, yes. yeah, yeah, that's going around. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, the, the team had f rightfully fully turned because the Matt Canada offense has been they absolutely have, terrible. I, I will they say have been that. outgained every single game this year. There hasn't been one game where they have outgained their opponent in yardage. Bob, did it I, is, did uh, I say jubile? <laughs> you said jubile? Hey, that's a hey, new word. Look, I've, I've said if you say a word – if people know what you mean by it, it's not a word. It is not. That's how words work. I'll tell you this. Uh, I promise you it's not just Matt Canada. Like, Kenny Pickett's been terrible. Just yeah. like we talk about Nathaniel Hackett and Zach Wilson, that is a combination of problems. Canada, Pickett, combination. Like, I've heard from legitimate, lifelong, hardcore Steeler fans who right now desperately want, wish, that Mason Rudolph was the quarterback for this team and, oh. and believe that that would be the best situation no. for this team. Yes. No. Yes. No. I'm, I, I, you. I'm sure that people actually think that, they but do. They, it is not correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, We've, yes, they might think it, but they don't. Again. Well, look, Mason Rudolph had some games where he could move the ball. So, so Kenny Pickett's moved the ball sometimes too. Oh, are you defending him now? No. Kenny Pickett, Stan. <laughs> no, no. Mike loves Pickett. I, I <laughs> don't like Rudolph. That's fair. <laughs> yeah. I mean, is Mitch Trubisky your choice then? Yeah. See, Mitch is uh Mitch is like Mitch is better than Rudolph. Mitch is Pittsburgh's Winston. Yeah, that's fair. You're probably gonna lose. He he'll throw for three hundred and four. But interceptions. It it it's at least a glimmer of hope. Like let's Matt see. Matt Canada's what, gone. Let's see if we can turn this offense around. That was today's news and notes presented by USAA Insurance. Learn more at USAA.com slash insurance let's get to that jubial waiver wire welcome to the waiver wire presented by call of duty modern warfare 3 uh this week no buys no buys next week six all of huge them. buys <laughs> bears bills giants raiders ravens vikings um <sighs> so many big players missing next week but this week we're like nah you're playing on Thanksgiving, folks. So we've got everybody, which means the Megala Dawn episode will oh, be man. huge. <laughs> Running back waiver wire selections. Uh, I, I I assume it's unanimous. I haven't looked yes. at where you guys have them, but there's one big pickup. This Zach week. Charbonnet is a must pickup. For yeah. the Seattle Seahawks. It's not a great matchup against the San Francisco 49ers, but this is a very it's not talented... not a good matchup next week. It's not a good matchup the following week. Right. The the, the three-week run is the Niners, the Cowboys, the Niners. Not what you hope for, but this is a very talented player who will get a lion's share of the work. He will receive passes. He will have goal line opportunities. He can have chunk yardage. And when he is a workhorse back, he should be very valuable for fantasy, and he's he's a clear uh, waiver wire pickup of the week to me. I would be, you know, going all in at this point in the season. There's not much you need to withhold and save for your fab. 
Um, I will say, look at your other league mates. Make sure you know how much fab they have, uh, so that you don't overspend unnecessarily. If you could save, you know, five bucks going into the playoffs where you can grab the right defense, great. Otherwise, spend it all if you need a start. Okay. Other options: AJ Dillon should get the start for Green Bay. Takes on Detroit. Um, what was the Detroit matchup last week? Chicago, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Was that okay? Um, I don't know if you had seen this, Jason. I think it was in the Stream Finder tool um, for the Foot Clan. But Detroit's run defense has softened of late. Have they, you noticed this? They they have softened of late. Um, I think a lot of it, you know, sometimes it's it's happenstance. Like this last week, they gave up a rushing a rushing touchdown to Deonta Foreman, but the the situation that caused I lied. that where I he, lied, where I, he think. <laughs> I think I lied, where he got on the goal line and got the touchdown was just not. It wasn't bad rushing defense. It was just unfortunate that they got a goal line opportunity and uh, weren't able no, to stop. No, no, I was lying, Jay. Great. It must have been somebody else that was a stout run D earlier in the year that I was worried about because. They've still been very good. Yeah, on on the season, Chicago, are, LA have were were awful the last two weeks. On so. the season, uh, they are still ranked eighth against running backs and fantasy points given up. So look, you need to start AJ Dillon's available. I know a lot of people out there that were playing Deonta Foreman or were playing, uh, you know, some of these uh, Ty Chandler. Ty Chandler's in play as well. I mean, Ty Chandler was very good, but he's sharing. So was Alexander Madison. So how would you break up some fab spend on? You know, Dylan Chandler, and let me throw Keaton Mitchell in the mix, who, you know, I think there's optimism about him, but the opportunity hasn't quite been there yet. Man, Dylan, it's it's difficult because Dylan's going to get so much volume. the The matchup is not great. He gets Kansas City the following week, then he does get the Giants. So, I think there's life there, and we we don't know as of this recording how long Aaron Jones is going to be out. I think he's going to miss at least a few weeks. So, A.J. Dillon, while it's not a great play, I mean... It's 10, like fantasy, it's 10 fantasy points to me. Yeah, which 10 fantasy points off of, if you can get it off the waiver wire, because he's available in about 40% of leagues. If you can get 10 points off the wire, that's that's great. With And there will be some upside that they just happen to, you know, get dragged down on the one, and then A.J. Dillon gets the touchdown. So, I think he's the safest play. Ty Chandler, to me remains the most interesting because he didn't get – he actually saw a downgrade in snaps, 31% of the snaps, and yet 14 opportunities. And the dude is – like Keaton Mitchell, like Ty Chandler's extremely fast. Alexander Madison fumbled again. Uh, so I, it's, I think there's room there that it, no matter what, it's going to be a timeshare. But there's room that Ty Chandler's opportunities could start shifting in, in an upward direction and he gets Chicago – then the bye week, and then Vegas. So if you need points right now, I guess I'm going Dylan, but I would take Ty Chandler over Keaton Mitchell. Yeah, all, all of them are in play. I, Both I, on man. bye after this week. So yeah. if if you need them this week, I get it. But I have, I have a real hard time trusting A.J. Dillon. It just feels like a trap. Uh, the matchups are bad. He's bad. Um, you're going to throw on the Lions. You're not going to run on them. So to and and AJ Dillon because of the injury to Aaron Jones is going to cost you a lot. You're going to have to spend up to acquire him. He's going to be 20 plus fab in every league that he's available. Whereas like Zeke Zeke might be sitting on waivers and be a $0 bid. Zeke's been okay. He's he had, less rostered than Dillon is today. Yeah, he had 13 carries in his last game. The game before that five targets. He plays against the Giants. You know, who's more likely to get a touchdown this week, A.J. Dillon by himself or Zeke in a timeshare against the Giants? I, I lean slightly towards the Zeke side. At the very least, it's very close. So if you yeah. want to save Fab, the you know, I, I think you could look towards Ezekiel Elliott. I also think Roshan Johnson is going to get some opportunities in the next few weeks. The offense, you know, we've seen success there with Deonta Foreman in recent weeks. Justin Fields is back. I'm just putting it on people's radar yes. because – He's probably going to be in the lower, maybe no fab spin this week. You could stash him with Foreman's injury. Roshan's a hard runner. Herbert didn't look good to me. I, I will say it's a bad matchup, then a bye week, then a bad matchup. So it's hard to see the nice rosy path. Um, If Damian Pierce hits waivers, 
after this week, are you picking him up? Picking him up, you, sure, I'll stash him. But I would, I'm not picking him up to play immediately. This is a, I'm my team's good, and I'm just going to add some depth. Uh, really, that kind of is the end of the list of premier options. The rest of the guys are just insurance situations. Elijah Mitchell for CMC, mm-hmm. um, probably you know. I guess Latavius for James Cook, but really tough matchup. Then a bye week, then a really tough matchup for Latavius. Probably, you know, it's one of those things. If James Cook went straight down, I think that they would be Ty Chandler and Latavius in bad matchups. Uh, you know, everybody else is kind of insurance. I think I, I, Elijah Mitchell, Latavius, and Rico Dowdle are. Isn't he hurt? A, he, he, he's a still played bit. a little oh. bit, but they're just to me. Those are. Those they should be rostered in in like almost every single league. They you we're at the time of year where you don't you don't want to have a situation where Tony Pollard misses time and and everyone knows it and now it's a you know a rush to the waiver wire. Who's the la- the last person who actually has Fab? You should be stashing these people right now. Like if I didn't need to play Zeke this weekend. I would put yeah. I'd put Dowdle on the back of my roster or Elijah. I mean Elijah Mitchell's the number one to me because if, if God forbid <laughs> Christian McCaffrey gets hurt, Elijah Mitchell will be incredible. Incredible. One hundred percent. And he is for sure the backup. Yeah, he is the guy. Uh, yeah. If you if did you see the press conference with Shanahan uh, being asked about why Mitchell is getting run over Mason? I did not. Oh man. He was he was not having that question and uh he made it very clear that uh, Mitchell is is the number two. He's he's the backup, and he's done great things for them in the past, and that's what they want. It's not that he doesn't like Jordan Mason. It's that Mitchell's the backup. And so Mitchell's a great pickup. I agree completely about like game theory. If you're not going to start someone like Zeke, then the idea of picking up someone like Elijah Mitchell is far more important because the following week, one of those guys could be a league winner, and it's not Zeke. Right. Um, the only other name I will throw out there, just to pay attention to – because, uh, you know, we said after the bye week, after his injuries, Miles Sanders was the clear backup. That he was barely getting used. My expectation was by the end of the season, he will regain the starting role when he is fully recovered from the groin issue. It appeared this last week to be a complete 50-50 for the first time in a while. Uh, you know, he was playing 18% of snaps, 25% of snaps. This last week, he had the majority of snaps over Chuba, uh, basically the exact same amount of snaps, and it could continue trending back to where we saw to start the season where he was a 65% player. All right, let's move on to the wide receivers after a quick break. All right, heading into week 12, we've got some wide receivers that we want to bring up as waiver wire options for your roster. Who's at the tippy top of your list among, um, the available wideouts. He's still, for, for me, he's still rostered in a majority of leagues, but 40% of leagues out there, Josh Downs is sitting there uh, coming off the bye, might have needed to be dropped, and he was injured before that. So there, there's there's a lot of active leagues where Josh Downs is still available because of those reasons. Prior to the injury, he had a stretch run that was fantastic with Gardner, double-digit fantasy points and half-point scoring for a month straight, tons of targets, looked good. So Josh Downs is, is is very interesting to me. And this week, coming off of the bye, being healthy against Tampa Bay, mm-hmm. a true pass-funnel defense. The following week after that, the Tennessee Titans, a true pass-funnel defense, and the Bengals. Like it, the schedule is great for the Colts coming up here. Uh, so if Josh Downs is available, I would I would be looking for him first. I want to add some context to his injury situation because it came out from Colts beat writer this morning that uh, that would Nate Atkins talked about the injury has actually been there since organized training activities in the spring. It's never healed, and flare ups have been common throughout the season, and so uh, he's kind of not known when he can play and when he can't play, which is all the more impressive that he fought through it and has been such a separator. Like he's been an elite rookie wide receiver, honestly. Uh, but something to to monitor. Uh, you do have a fellow rookie, Jaden Reed, who mm-hmm. continues to be involved in Green Bay. 
you know, the difficult part of that in every one of those matchups, and this is a Thursday one, is just that you have, you know, Romeo Dobbs had a, a nice game. He's been scoring touchdowns. Christian Watson is always there. Musgrave's involved. So you're rolling the dice with Jaden Reed, but I think he is a really, really good player. He's probably not number two for me. Uh, oh, who's no. number two? Well, I, I think I'd rather pick up, like I have Rashid Shahid very high. Okay. Because I think Rashid Shahid will be heavily, heavily involved if Derek Carr is healthy. I think he'll still be involved if he isn't. But the uh, the target totals for Rashid Shahid without Michael Thomas. 25% against Minnesota of the 25% of the targets in week 10. Yeah, and he's he's just a he's a great player. And um he's he's not just a deep threat. Nine targets in that game Mike was bringing it up. So I do think Rashid Shahid is is pretty sneaky. Atlanta, Detroit, Carolina on the docket for him. You know, Beckham would have been at the very top of my that's, list. That's where I was going to go is what do we do But with, the injuries bugging me. With the uh the Ravens wide receivers because yes, Isaiah likely will be kind of the one-for-one one replacement of Mark Andrews. But Isaiah Likely, while he's a, a, I mean, a priority pickup at the tight end position, he's not Mark Andrews. So what does this team do with their wide receivers? Because Beckham has been, a, has been great. Like he's, he's had a really strong year considering he plays a very small amount of the snaps. Week one, when there was no Mark Andrews, that was the week that we had the the you know week the very first game for Zay Flowers and it was like ten targets or whatever it was so it was you know really exciting to see how much they're they're utilizing him so and then Bateman has been a massive disappointment he did catch a, a touchdown but that was his only catch this past week but they have to do something so are you going Beckham's in shoulder on, is on hurt Beckham? and that's what concerns me about going heavy I probably would bid. Slightly more on Beckham than Bateman. I, I would not be surprised that Bateman has a better week, and I would have been trading for Flowers if your deadline's not over. Because Flowers, you know, when you talk about the beginning of the year when Mark Andrews was hurt, it, it, Zay Flowers was the beneficiary. And then when Andrews came back, he, he went more to the sideline. So, Jason, I, I don't know if you agree. I don't know where your, your mindset is there. The shoulder injury for Beckham is is what stops me from putting him higher on the list. They have a bye week after this week. I, I love the matchup against the Chargers. You know that they're going to throw throw the ball on the Chargers, and it's just a matter of who. I think Beckham is a fine pickup and play. If I am ordering Beckham and Flowers, Flowers isn't on your waivers, but I would still have Flowers ahead. I think he'll be uh, the priority in the pecking order. Uh, but the deep shots you know, have been coming to Odell Beckham, and the matchup is, is perfect for that. Um, I've got another name that I think is – you know, when when you're when you're looking at picking up and playing a guy like Pop Douglas, Douglas, Demario Douglas, he is good, but he's not gonna go out there and explode. You know, because Mac Jones or Zappy, it's just one of those like if you need a couple points, you want a safe option that where you go. I know this guy's gonna get at least seven targets. Okay, you can go that way. But for me, Tutu Atwell sure. has had a lot of explosive games this year. And he's been very involved the last couple of weeks. It doesn't look like it on the box score. Only three targets last week. That's not true. It's because he drew about a hundred pass interference calls, but he had a lot of shots where those don't those don't end up on the box score. Um, you know, the play never happened. And but the targets were coming, deep targets were coming. And if if Cooper Cup is gone against Arizona, you could easily see the path for a touchdown and eighty plus yards for two two. It's a good point. He was good when Cup was out. So if Cup misses, more opportunity. Um, Khalil Shakir has been fantasy relevant in three of the last four weeks. Gabe Davis has been – he's just disappeared. Mm -hmm. So uh, What a good blocker, though. <laughs> I mean, strong lad. Uh, Khalil Shakir against Philly this week. Could be a spot start. Michael Wilson. Didn't play last week. Cardinals play the Rams. Somebody to monitor uh, along with Rondale Moore. If you're taking kind of dart throws in Arizona, those both seem like nerve-wracking plays to me. Yeah, Michael Wilson I I was really heating up on, but the fact that he he missed a game a couple weeks ago with a shoulder injury and then re-aggravated that shoulder, that's what he missed for again. I'm, I'm a little bit pessimistic 
then then they've got the uh, the bye week in week fourteen. So I the path for his breakout seems hampered. Would you drop Gabe to add Shakir? <laughs> no, <laughs> I would drop Gabe to add some of the people on this list, oh, but man. not Shakir. Gabe Davis is um, is weird, man. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, the last three weeks, Gabe Davis is two catches. Yeah. Over well, three weeks. I'm aware. <laughs> I, when you're asking me would I drop Gabe <laughs> Davis, you can ask me because I have Gabe Davis. And I I was questioning already, should I drop Gabe Davis for some of these guys? But he also is one of the rare few guys out there that can – have a hundred yard two touchdown game. I would drop him for potato. Rashid Shahid. That I would do. Sure. Okay. And then Downs, if he was out there, I would do that as well. And but should probably also bring up A. T. Perry uh, of the New Orleans Saints. He also saw eighty four percent of the snaps uh, in Week Ten against Minnesota. Another rookie. So he's he's someone to keep an eye on. Yeah, he's enormous, right? Yeah, he's six foot five. Yeah. I mean, enormous, tall. Yeah, he's six foot five, seventy eight pounds. Uh, he's two oh five, Jason. You just but two oh five at six five is that's yeah. felt. <laughs> so, uh, but with the with the injury to Michael Thomas, that's uh, you know, that's an important name, especially if um, Jameis is there because Jameis don't care. Well, last week we were talking about the matchup for um, Chris Godwin and Mike Evans didn't like Godwin against San Francisco. Godwin really didn't deliver again. Uh, six for thirty nine. Four for fifty four and two for sixteen the last three weeks. Would you move on from Godwin? It's hard to drop someone who's been so good in the past and who gets the has a great matchup that too. he has. So I, I don't think I I don't think I do I don't think I drop him, but Are you man. done with are you done with Jacoby Myers? Yeah. Yeah, I'm done with Jacoby Myers. Jacoby Myers, um, you know, I've I've seen him on some opponents' rosters, and when I see that I'm like, heck yeah, man. <laughs> So I don't want him on my He misses Jimmy G. Yeah, for sure. All right, uh, let's talk about some tight ends. I think Isaiah Likely is going to be at the top of people's lists. Mm-hmm. Just in case you can catch some likely in a bottle. Some likely like, in a bottle. No, don't repeat Boston. it. Boston. You don't repeat it. It makes yeah. it worse. Well, it doesn't make it worse if it's really good. Sometimes I repeat a good one yeah. and be like, listen to this again. Do you, uh, Mike, you said it's very unlikely that uh, Isaiah is worth maybe the price that you'd have to pay. He, you know, we have some, we have evidence of him being fantastic in replace of Mark Andrews, but this year, uh, you know, week one, they knew they were going to be without Mark Andrews. True. 72% of the snaps, one for four. And this, the game against the Bengals, they didn't know because that was a in-game injury, but still 74% of the snaps, two targets, no catches. He's out there running tons of routes. So, this particular week, look, because it's like Isaiah Likely, Pat Fryermuth, Kate Otten. I mean, it's it's pretty empty. So I I do think it's worth taking the risk on him, but don't look at Isaiah Likely as you're like, well, I did it. I solved my Mark Andrews problem. I got Likely in there, and he's going to carry me. It, it he should be okay, but there is a chance for zero dot zero points from him. I don't like the tight end options that are out there in in terms of majority not rostered. No. No, there's there's no. not a lot of good ones. The majority rostered Pat Pratt, Pat Fryermuth. <laughs> Pratt Pratt. Uh Chris Pratt <laughs> Fryermuth uh is, is out there still in about half a leagues as an awesome matchup against the Cincinnati Bengals. Um uh, they changed Matt Canada. I think I got no confidence in him right now. It, well, it's hard to have confidence in any pass catcher for the Steelers, especially one in Pat Fryermuth, who has had so many games when he's been active this year, where he's had like one reception for four yards. Sorry, sorry, I just happened to look at his his full season pace while you were saying that, and I I'm laughing because he he's on pace for 30 receptions for 200 yards. Yeah, I mean uh, that's, that's that's a 17 game pace. You're 17 saying. game pace. Yeah. Now, granted, his 17 game pace would be 30 for 200. Yes. Now that that's a little unfair. That's my stat line. Yeah. It's a little unfair because Tua his five Tua his five games um you know, were like fifty percent snaps kind of injury going away and coming back from injury, but uh it's not good no matter how you slice yeah, it. Yeah, I'm not I'm not in. But this is still I'd a, rather have Kate Otten. 
This is still a player. I'd rather have Donald Parham. This is still a player who last year was, you know, a 98 target, 730 uh, reception or uh, yard tight end. He's he's a talented human being. Was that two years ago? No, that was last, last year? season. Yeah, no, I look, the talent's there, but I'm just telling you if I'm going into my fantasy playoffs, I'm trying hard not to play him. So if, if this, you have, this week, if you've got Mike, I'd play, let me I'd, ask Mike. Okay. If you've got Isaiah Likely or you've got Pat Fryermuth, both have plus matchups, which one are you going with? I would go Likely. Um, but I was going to say, if if you lost Mark Andrews in your redraft, I'm probably trying to add both of those guys. Like, you, you need to take multiple shots at the tight end position. Yeah, I mean, that's that, <laughs> that's exactly what I just did. Did you have them both? I lost Mark Andrews in our dynasty, uh -huh. and I had no other people. So I I have got I, I went and got Isaiah Likely, Pat Fryermuth, and Hunter Henry. I'm shotgunning. <laughs> I, I – um, You're BB gunning. <laughs> yeah, that sounds much better. <laughs> I was talking to Jason this morning, and I just want to mention it because he's, he's heavily rostered 80%. But maybe your trade deadline's not over. Maybe he's out there. I think that there is a decent chance we get a reprise from David Njoku towards the end oh, of, yeah, end of this that. season. Yeah, I think he might he might legitimately be the best tight end in fantasy over the next six weeks. He has plus matchups in every single game the rest of the season when you face tight. You know when you're talking about tight ends, and uh, to to use a word used too often yesterday, he's already been on a heater. He's already been uh, f 15 targets last week, eight or nine targets the weeks before. And uh, the way that this offense is functioning right now, I'm telling you, it, Jason, you, you've said it all year long. You're looking at the opposition and what they give up to the tight end position, and you're leaning into that. This week, Najoku plays Denver. They're dead last. They're worse than Cincinnati mm -hmm. in terms of fantasy points given up. And like I said, every matchup from here until the end of the regular season is plus for tight ends. And – um and and to, he can't complete the ball down the field to Cooper. Some of DTR. the some of the matchups that you look to target the most this year are the Houston Tech at at tight end Houston Texans, Los Angeles Rams, Cincinnati Bengals, uh, Denver, Denver. All of those are his <laughs> like that like that was off the top of my head. I'm not looking at his schedule, but every single one of those are in the upcoming schedule. So uh, it, it's a really solid point. Yeah, and D Denver, the Rams, Jacksonville, Chicago, Houston, the Jets, and Cincinnati. And uh, he's already been a top 12 tight end five consecutive weeks. What's his t What's his target numbers over the last couple weeks? His target numbers have been massive. It's, uh, let I know me we had 15, 15 this last 15 week. from DTR, nine the week before, six, eight, nine. Yeah, those, those are great numbers. And, and we talked about this a little bit, but with DTR at quarterback, the he needs Najoku. He needs a short dump off big target because he's not hitting those 15 20 yard uh shots down the field to Amari Cooper. It was weird like you brought up like Jerome Ford started the game got a red zone carry scored great start but he had a super low snap percentage and then uh DTR had 45 dropbacks the third highest in the league last like in a in a game that's 10 to 10 you would have expected them to make it a running game and not put it into DTR's hands. Yeah, like he threw the ball 12 times. But instead, he had 45 dropbacks in this game. There is – And a, they're they're winning ball games, man. There is an a off chance that Joe Flacco is the quarterback for the Cleveland Browns. They did add him to the, the practice squad yesterday or the day before. I can't recall. That, that happened. Coinciding with that, they did say that, that, that Dorian will start again this week. But like if if he goes out there, and they lose because of him, it wouldn't surprise me if they moved to Flacco because they're this is a playoff team. Would that yeah. make you feel good about Amari Cooper? Uh, better, better for sure, and and even better uh, with Najoku. It's funny because our bar for Amari Cooper is so low. Like we wanted the kind of not good Deshaun Watson to help him out. Mm -hmm. He just needs not terrible. That's right. all he needs. Defensive options, uh, you know, Kansas City plays Las Vegas this week. Aiden O'Connell is an interception machine combined with the Chiefs who made Jalen Hurts look silly for two quarters. Kansas City is a smash play, but they're heavily rostered. Mm -hmm. uh, when you look at, uh, you know, you can look at the Denver defense who's been stepping it up. 
They get to play DTR. Uh, that's a good play. And the game's at home for Denver. Miami plays the Jets and Tim Boyle. Yes, please. Yeah, that's uh, – They're pretty heavily rostered too. Minnesota plays Chicago. Risky business, in my opinion. It's, it's It always is when, when Fields is on the other side. It could be great or it could be risky. Yeah, I, you can even – it could be up, both. Yeah, I mean, you can give up a bunch of points to Justin Fields, and he will still take, turn the ball he will, over. He will still take sacks, and he will still turn the ball over. So the low-rostered options that I like, I mean, I love the Broncos against DTR. Then I would go Vikings, and then I would say um, probably the Patriots against uh, not Danny DeVito. I, I, I might play the, the Giants defense – that but that over game. the Patriots defense. I I have the Patriots because it's the, at home and and the Patriots they might be starting your brother. Yeah, I mean I I uh, I would play the Patriots over the it Giants. It hasn't been but announced I, yet. I love both of those options in that game. You don't expect an you expect some turnovers and some lackluster offense and some sacks. So Giants Patriots game defenses are good and and the Bengals are still out there. They're going to be at home against the Steelers who. Their offense just stinks. Sometimes we rattle off so many that I want to remind people. Yeah, we do have our rankings on the website, so you can you can catch the waiver rankings, um, and that includes defenses now. Something we added this year, the waiver wire rankings. So a summary of the whole show where we have players ranked, and um, that way you can compare it to your league and who's available. Like I saw a league where New Orleans was available, like the defense this morning. One of my leagues where they play Atlanta and Desmond Ritter, and it's like. Yeah, that would be great to I, pick up. Ironically, I think that you should look at Atlanta as well in case Derek Carr does not clear concussion protocol because you know Jameis loves throwing touchdowns to the other team. Um, so, And then following that, they get the Jets. Today's waiver wire was brought to you by Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Face off against the ultimate threat in a single player uh, matchup or you can settle old scores on uh, 16 iconic maps in multiplayer and survive the hordes in a co-op open-world zombie experience. Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3, available now, rated M for Mature. Full stream ahead. Well, we all have our streaming quarterback options this week, but the first question I have uh, that Brooks threw in there. If Trevor Lawrence was dropped last week, which he probably was because it was his first, you know, he had a good performance, but it was the first 20-plus point performance since week 15 of last year, are you forgiving him and just adding some fab, you know, spinning fab to add him? He plays Houston, Cincinnati, Cleveland the next three weeks. He's a streaming option, and that's how you need to view him. If he was on the waivers, I would pick him up over my streaming option right now that I'm about to say because he plays against Houston. That should be a, a game where I want most of the pieces uh, on both sides of the ball. Now that he's got Zay Jones back, um, that I'm sure factored into him having a really good game yeah, last I week. I agree. So I would play Trevor Lawrence over my streaming candidate, but I wouldn't just go, I'm unloading everything for Trevor Lawrence and he's my starter the rest of the way because it's not going to be good. You know, Going to Cleveland is probably not going to be a good time. Exactly. So my streaming candidate this week is Jordan Love, a uh, player who has not looked good the majority of times, has had a, a handful of just excellent throws. One of those things where you can – you can really see the talent that's there, but the inconsistency, I, I don't know that it ever gets fixed. But this matchup against Detroit is really, really good because we've brought it up. It's very difficult to run against Detroit, and you can have success throwing, and you need to throw because Detroit usually puts up 30 points. So um, th this is in Detroit, which is great. That means it's in a dome. No worry about weather. He's coming off his first 300-yard game. He's actually the quarterback 12 right now. And you look at his receiving options. I, you know, it's like Dude. I like Jaden Reed, I like Christian Watson, I like Romeo Dobbs, and, uh, and I like Dontavious. John Wicks. <laughs> I was gonna say, uh, we talked John about Wicks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don, yeah. trying that on for size. Yeah. It's, it's not bad. I love John Wick. So it's harder to say Dontavian. Yeah, it's easier to say John. Dontavian hmm. Wicks. We we talked about the Packers wide receivers uh, on. Uh, well, it's not out yet, but the the the, the episode of the Dynasty Show this week. And it was, dude, they have, they have like a sneaky, good young crew. As long as Jordan Love can develop, I mean, he is he's already set up for success. My streamer this week, it's Baker Mayfield 
against the Indianapolis Colts, 27th in schedule just fantasy points. Colts home games are averaging 57 points. Whew, yeah, baby. That's number one in the NFL. I want that game. Big oh, game. boy. Oh, boy. I want that game. Yeah, he wants it, Mike. I retract. He does. <laughs> I'm out. Baker, uh, three games in a dome this year, two touchdowns, three, two. It's, it should be a good time. This, this should be a really fun game. You know, it, it's crazy because you said the wheels have come off a little bit for Tampa where they were competing. Ian Harditz put out the uh, Baker Mayfield's last uh, – four of the last five weeks. Week seven, he, he drove for the game-tying field goal. They get the game-tying field goal, and then Atlanta kicks a game-winning field goal as time expires. He has the Hail Mary in week eight that Godwin just barely missed. He had the go-ahead touchdown against Stroud in week nine, mm -hmm. where it seems like they had won the game, and then Stroud says, no, thank you. And then in week 11, he had the two drops against um, you know San Francisco when the game was close. He's been pretty good and just not getting a lot of help. I like it. I thought about that one this week. I'm going to go with the Winston Carr, whoever starts against Atlanta because the matchup's so good, so I don't care. Over the last five weeks, the Falcons, they're dead last in schedule adjusted fantasy points allowed to the quarterback position. In fact, the last three weeks are kind of embarrassing, Atlanta. Kind of. Uh, four touchdowns in the quarterback six. That was Will Levis against you. Le Levis has been garbage. Ter he's been terrible. But not against Atlanta. Nope. Josh Dobbs was uh, three touchdowns in the quarterback five. Didn't even play the whole game. And then Kyler Murray was the quarterback six against you. You know, if it's Carr, he'll have Kamara and Taysom and Olave and uh, Rashid Shahid. Put and in if, the car. And if it's Winston. Put in the Winnebago. <laughs> Okay. All right. Now, see if I repeat that. Right. Yeah. It kind of throws it into question. Okay. You see, see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Uh, but that would be my streaming quarterback option. That means that this show is over, and all we have left is the Megalodon. Oh, so oh, oh, man. save your get, voice, Jason. I'm going straight yeah. to bed right now. Going to hydrate, Got get it. an IV drip. Hydrate now and Now, that's not really different from a normal day. No, I like going to bed real early. Yeah, that's a and the IV. Usually around eleven a.m. Yeah, we just I keep him to, kind of in a like a, a capsule. Yeah, and we uh, wake up for the show. You wake up for the show. and We put him back under. Go back down. Yeah. <laughs> uh, YouTube.com slash the fantasy footballer. Subscribe. Click the bell. Get notified when the show drops. <laughs> Mike is shaking his head. Um, just so proud to be a part of this crew, right? I mean, it's 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 the pinnacle, really. Yeah, the show is just excellence all the time. Excellent all the time. Awesome, excellent. That'll do it for today's episode. Talk to you tomorrow on the Megalodon. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter at the FFBallers.